This week on The Point, how Disney got the princess thing all wrong. And we'll listen to the band with Lion and the Lamb. You should read the book of Esther. It's an incredible story about a princess. It, it, it takes place thousands of years ago when the people of Israel had been sent into exile. They had been taken over. And, and this is the story of one little group of them. They were in the city of Susa in the kingdom of Persia. They had no control, no authority, no power. As the story unfolds, you find out that there is this one young lady who's become a princess, even a queen. And, and, and she, she really uh, doesn't have any authority as a princess or a queen. In fact, she's not even allowed to go into the presence of the king unless she's summoned. She's just one of the king's many wives. And yet she's the only one that's part of the followers of God. She's the only one that's part of this little community of Jewish people who are living far away from any home. Well, as the story goes, a great crisis in the land arises. The, the, the people, the, the, the Jewish people are about to be wiped out within that nation because they won't bow to anyone but God. And as he come down to this moment of decision, she has an uncle named Mordecai. Her uncle raised her as a little girl and her uncle sends word to her, you need to go and do something about this. You, you've got to go speak to the king. And she replies back, there's no way I can do that. I'm not even allowed into his presence. If I just barge in there, there's only one rule, and that is that I will be put to death. And besides, he hasn't even called for me in over 30 days. In other words, she says, I have no authority. I have no power. I'm just a princess. I have two girls, two daughters. They've learned to be a princess from Disney. And it drives me crazy. Man, that whole idea of, well, you're just going to sit in a tower until some uh, Prince Charming comes and climbs your hair and saves you. Or you'll just be put in a box and you'll just be sitting there all pretty, but not doing anything until some Prince comes along and gives you a kiss and saves you. I don't want my daughters to just be waiting around for some Prince to come and save them. Well, Mordecai has his little girl there that he raised. And she says, I can't do this. It's too dangerous. It's not safe. There really is very little hope of any success. It's just not possible. Basically, she says to Mordecai, to her uncle, I'm a princess. And he sends this reply. He says to her, you know what? God will save us. God is still God. And whether you do it or someone else, God will rise up salvation from somewhere. Basically, he says to her, God is in charge. God is in control. He's holding this whole world and even this difficult situation in his hands. And then he says, but perhaps, perhaps you have been brought to this position You've been put in this place with this set of experiences for such a time as this. Those words are kind of famous. Many of us have heard them. It's the idea that God has wired us, created us, given us the experiences that he's given us, the talents and the skills, because he's put us right in this position for the work that he has for us to do. But what I love is how Mordecai responds to his little princess. He says, yes, yes, you're a princess, but you're a princess with a mission. He doesn't say just sit back and be protected. No, he reminds her of two things. One, God is in charge. This is God's story. It doesn't all depend on you. He doesn't say to her, if you don't do this, nobody else will. Instead, he says, no, God, this is God's story. God's in charge. God's the hero here. And then the second thing he does, well, he invites her to be a part of God's mission. 
And guys, this is incredible. He says, perhaps God has gifted you just for this. Now, it's not as sure as I would want it to be. Whenever I have a calling to do something, I, I want to know for sure. I want God to send me an email. Or better yet, I'd love a burning bush. Then I would know. But Mordecai, all he says is, perhaps. And yet, she hears this call. Somehow, she begins to understand. And she responds with unbelievable courage. She says, get everybody to pray for me. And on three days, I'm going to go in. And then she says, and if I die, I die. She understands this is God's work. It's God's mission. I'm going to play my part in it. And she moves from a, a princess with a position to a person with a mission. God calls each one of us. He's calling you. He's calling you, inviting you. You get to be a part of God's work in this world. And for some of you, for some of you, you actually need to be Mordecai's. You need to be looking for who you can encourage and challenge and whose faith you can fan into flame. I'm going to pray for you. God, I pray that you would make our callings clear. Help us to have eyes to see the places where you've called us to be a part of your great mission. And God, give us the courage to actually, to actually go after that calling, to actually take that step of faith. And Father, give us eyes to see like Mordecai has, who it is that's around us that we need to encourage in, into their mission, that we need to point them in the direction that you've called them. We pray this in your name. Amen. Good morning, Advent. It's great to see everybody. He's coming on the clouds. He's coming on the clouds. He's Thank you. 
stop the Lord. Who could stop the Lord? Oh, my dear. Who could stop the Lord? Oh, my dear. Who could stop the Lord? We're so glad that you've made us part of your faith journey. We would love to meet you in person sometime. If you want to join us at Advent Church any Sunday morning, it would be great to get to know you that way. If you're watching us on Facebook, make sure that you like the videos and that you share them. And if you're on YouTube, make sure that you like it, you subscribe, and you set up your notifications so that you know every time we post a new video. Thanks for joining us on The Point.